We have so a Kelly, what's nice is dreams part two, because the first yes. time you did dreams, it was so overwhelming from everyone's point of view and so many experiences people wanted to ask about that we thought we should do not dreams number two. So yes. everybody, this is for the dreams number two. Hi, Jody. Hi, Suzanne. And so, and say, so Scott. Hi, Scott. So with this is dreams number two, I know we, people send a lot of their dreams in and you've been picking a couple, right? Well, I've been picking, pick, yeah, I've picked up a couple of dreams and I think I, we ought to start with just a couple, a couple of things mm -hmm. that I think are really important here. And then we'll go through the dreams in just a second. But what I wanted to, to, talk about with dreams, whoops, where'd I go, is that, um, I mean, a dream is a series of images or emotions or sensations that our brains produce while we sleep. So everybody dreams. Some people may, you know, think that they don't, but everybody dreams. But the dreams that I thought we would concentrate on today, and wh whatever anybody comes up, we will, James and I will analyze, but they're different types of dreams. I mean, you might have a dream where it's a visitation. So the, if you have a visitation dream, you know, that would be somebody, something from a, a deceased loved one, which would, we will definitely be talking about. Um, and you might have a processing dream where you're dealing with maybe things that like stress and you're emotionally charged or trauma, and that might be processing. And, and you also might have a lucid dream where the, you know, you, you are aware that you're dreaming. So I thought we would, talk, and then our psychic and a, or a prediction dream, you might have even some of those. So I thought we would talk about all of those also. Okay. So, and I thought it'd be fun to start with, James, should we start with one of the ones that somebody left for us? Yeah, that's, that would be a great way to start. Okay. So um, Renee, can you put one up for us, please? So thank you everybody for sending your dreams. We couldn't get to all of them, but I, I grabbed them. Yeah. Thank you. thank you so much. So this is from Tracy Hildreth. Hi, Tracy. Now, James, I love this one. She said, my dad came to me for a very brief moment in a dream. He died on Easter, so recently, and came to me about three weeks later. He was his much younger self, like the photos yes. when I was born. We were yes. in a living room that was clean and tidy. The last 30 years of his life, he hoarded. So I was a bit surprised. We were sitting across the room from one another. He told me he was able to see things more clearly now. I asked him why he was his younger self, and he said, because he could see. He had lost wow. his vision in 2011. I woke up feeling grateful that he had some understanding that he shared it with me. It's incredible. So and I know, it. Tracy, that I know that you had had a problem with your dad before before he had passed and you had gone and had a wonderful um, trying to you know make things right with him before he passed. So I think that this was such a a visitation so it's such an oh, important yeah. one for you yes, that's the answer to you tracy there it is and that's that's an honor man that's really great that your dad was able to do that and you know when we leave this physicalness this density this vibration and we have the freedom of, of who we are that comes back to us because that whole breath of life and and it's the life who we are this earthly life is just a, it's an illusion it's only part of us right. and when we leave this physical vibration into the spirit realm that, that levels of consciousness that's our true selves so for him to come through in that way right. that clearly right. and they come back to younger in their life they go to the younger part of their life and many times when they first pass over there many times will go to the mother's house that they remember when they were kids and the reason why they do that is because it's an association and it helps with their transition they're familiar with that that living room or that house and looks just like they, did they were kids. And the spirit people many times will dress them like they looked when they were younger because they know the outfit you would love or that you'd like. Like, wow, I can't believe I, I, my old outfit. How did you do that? Well, we had our thought create that for you because you, we, you like that dress. You like that outfit. So that happens all the time. Yeah. So, and love their eyes. They're always around us. Right after they pass over, they're, you know, they're right with us and they want us to know they're okay. So that's definitely a visitation for me. Definitely. Thank you so and much, a message, Tracy. You know, and a message dream, you know, a mediumship message dream, for sure. For sure. Right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Renee. Here's one I want to read. This is from Aireen Baston. And she said, I've had re reoccurring dreams about being lost in a big school building. What could this mean? So Arlene, mm -hmm. when anybody has a reoccurring dream, it's always about something they're anxious about. Something it's giving you a message. What are you anxious about? So reoccurring dreams means something's going on in your psyche that you're anxious about something. So lost in a big school building, maybe lost or not knowing what you want to do with your education because you said a school building. So it could be something like that. Wait, Kelly. Okay. School is learning. 
So I'm, I'm on to learn this. I want to learn that. I'm yeah. afraid of not getting the class on time. It's yes. all about new learning, new classes yes. you're taking. And getting we're lost because I'm not sure what to, what to do, what class to take. One right. step at a time. You'll get to each classroom. Just give yourself time. Right. right. Oh, I love that. I love that. That is so I always forget where they're having the dream. So school tells me a lot yes. about that, you know, where, right. where it is taking place. Um, Very important. So this is interesting. Suzanne Mc, McPhail says, one of my most spiritual dreams I've ever had was a dream I had at the time of my boyfriend's death. In the dream, he said, I'll miss you. And she said, I woke up the time of the accident. So how do we explain that, James? I mean, well, that's it's a great one. And, yeah. and, and, you know, if you talk about dreams, there's levels of consciousness mm -hmm. and that there really is no such thing as time. Linear time is only this three dimensional world. So really, we're just poking through different levels of awareness of being of consciousness. There's all these different levels of consciousness. So mostly we're out of the body. We're not in the body. So when you have that awareness on that conscious level of the, that experience, you're not in this linear time. Right. That makes sense. Right, right. Um, and in some level, we all see our past and our future. We just do. But we have to measure it in this physical three-dimensional world, this linear time, because it's something to measure things by. But really, we kind of on some level know our, our future and our past. So true. So true. Um, let's see. Oh, Renee, can you put up one of those other ones, please, if you don't mind? <laughs> There's so many. You guys are so great about writing so many good ones here. Thank you. So many. Okay, so this is from Marge Webb. She says, I have one I remember from way back. So ma imagine you still remember that dream from a long time ago. She said, I was walking down a cobblestone street, looking into little windows of shops. I got to the end of the shops, walked a little farther. It got very light out. The road had turned to white marble, and it was a huge area. As I walked into this area, in the middle was a huge white marble building. I felt it was a library or learning place. What do you think, Kelly? Oh, you were definitely at one of the wonderful libraries on the other side, Hall of Records or somewhere. I mean, there were someplace on the other Thank side. Very much. And it's how the conscious mind re remembers it, this physical dimension. It's how the conscious okay. mind interprets it. So exactly, it sounds just like a meditation I do with you know, the people, bringing them to the other side and, um, you know, the holes of learning, if you will. I totally agree. Right. Oh, my God. I love that. That's so true. Um, okay, here we go. This is interesting. Tiffany Auclair says, I saw my son's father in a waiting room and saw this beautiful woman standing off to the corner. She told me she was watching over him, and I woke up to a phone call telling me that he had passed. Precognitive, yeah, probably. yeah, Pre or something happens. Precognitive dream yeah. that's a great one, and that yeah. that's we're never alone, they're always looking after us, whatever you want to call them angels, guides, whatever it doesn't matter. That loving connection that you know, people think that when someone just passes, whether an accident or that no one's aware of it, they're very aware when a soul's coming over. Whether we humans it's an accident, it's sudden, nothing's ever sudden, they know before it happens, so they're yes. always very prepared for the homecoming. Right. Right. Um, so here we go. Uh, Lizette Perez. Hi, Liz. She says, how does one know if it's a premonition dream or a past life dream? Well, um, that's well, there is no past, present, or future. I don't saw one. Um, I, I think premonition would be something. Well, obviously what is it? in the future is something which you yeah. looking forward to. And it's just it's hard to explain it. Past life, uh, I guess it's different for each person. My experience with past life dreams, and I've had several very intense ones, mm -hmm. was where I knew I was there, but it was a different time period. And it was a different situation in a lifetime. Right. And I knew the relationship I was having with certain people. It was a different thing. So I knew it inside me. I felt it was right. from a time gone by. Um, premonition dreams, and I thought about this two days ago. Very interesting. Um, I think we remember them on some level, but then when they actually occur in the physical, it's like, oh, I dreamt this. I remember this. Is this deja vu? Right. Could be a deja vu because I dreamt this before. I lived this before, and now it's manifesting. And right. uh, that's what we tell us premonition. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've had, years I've had, ago, puppy dreams. <laughs> well, and I've, had, I'm sure you have too, James, where we've had almost like prophetic dreams where things are, you know, we have a dream and it's so such a lucid dream. It's so real that, I mean. You know, I know something is going to happen. I, I, I dreamt of the towers going down. There you I go. 
Yeah. Two or three years beforehand. And I couldn't tell where it was. But I knew there were tall, I knew there were smoke, and there was a tower. I knew it was both towers, but I knew it was definitely when it happens. I had that dream. Now, this is something else which is weird because well, this is very, very interesting. When you first wake up into this conscious state, the physical, in the early morning, let's say, and you're not totally phys- fully back into that physical awareness, that conscious state, you're still kind of in and out of it, still getting back into the body, into that level. And I'll never forget, I was working in a job and I was um, ironing my shirt. Okay. Job, and that space shuttle, when I was watching the space shuttle take off, and I'm ironing my, sh- never forget, ironing the sleeve. And, also, and it was about 7.15 in the morning in California, in LA. And I thought, oh, it's going to blow up. It's going to blow. I just know it's going to blow up. And 10 minutes later, it went up, blew up. And I was wow. like, no. And I called a friend of mine who's a Sandra Edwards, who was a psychic from England, who I don't know where she is now. I think she moved to Vegas. But she said to me, I called, I was very disturbed about it. And she said, James, you have to realize when you have this ability, this sensitivity, you will see things that you can't control. And I said, but could I have done something? She goes, no, who would have believed you? So that comes with the territory of premonitions, of right. seeing things. And you have to be kind of objective, as terrible as it sounds. Yeah. You have to be objective. You got to step back and realize that you see things in the future yeah. and that will happen. And it could be in the dream state. Most people see them in the dream state. Right. Premonition. Right. That's so true. Do you remember that time Mavis Patilla had the dream about, she was ironing too. Remember? Wasn't a dream. Actually, yes. she was not, it was not a dream. She was actually ironing. It reminded me of when you said ironing. And all of a sudden a man materialized in front of her. And it was, he said the word bomb. Do you remember that? She told yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And she said the word, he said the word bomb. And she and Jean both were so startled and so shook that she actually called, I think, uh, the airport or wherever it was, or the police right. or whatever. Right. And um, That's I don't exactly think anything, right. but anything happened. But it was that scary to her. And, and, and it's very interesting, though, because when I was visiting Mavis, and Mavis is an, an old time medium for many, many years, and a friend of ours. And um, gosh, when I visit her house where she lives, um, she was ironing. She was ironing my she underwear. She loves it. Point. She loves ironing. I said, Mavis, ironing? She goes, it's my meditation. It's my meditation, James. She goes, I iron out the wrinkles. It's like ironing out the wrinkles of life. <laughs> and she's and that's her meditation. So she's right. putting herself to an altered state of consciousness. So she would have that awareness, that premonition, because she's in that altered state. Well, thanks, Kelly. Thanks, thanks James. Everybody. Thanks, Thank Renee. you, Renee. Thanks, everybody. See you Renee, next week. Thanks, everyone. On Friday. Yay. <laughs> Come on in. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean, left. Woo! The James and Kelly Show.